Alrighty guys, it's time for another episode of Rocket Vlogs. Here's some cool news. I've decided on the color officially. It's sitting right over there. It is undoubtedly the most expensive rocket paint job I've ever done. Um, I know it's a little weird to uh, be like, oh man, this paint was so much money, because it's like not that much money relative to the cost of this big rocket and the perspective motors that are going into it. But it's my channel, I'll complain about what I want to complain about. Anyway, the fillets are super smooth and super nice. The shape is really good. As you can see, I had a couple little touch-up spots that I'm going to handle real fast. And then I'm going to sand this whole body tube down. And we're going to hit it with one more coat of primer and then our first coat of color. But, like I said before we get to that, I need to correct these. Um, there's just a couple little more pinholes that you probably wouldn't even notice with paint and gloss coat on there, but they were gonna bother me, so here we are. And then of course, I think I pointed out last time, there was a, I don't know, maybe some saw marks or something in these fins from the beveling process. So there's just a couple little nicks, uh, not a big deal. Just filled those, sanded them out, or I'm about to sand them out. There's actually another one right there, but I didn't notice it, so whatever, again, little things that uh, you're not going to notice, especially with the color I chose. But uh, yeah, let's go throw this on the old sanding table. We'll smooth these out. We'll uh, hit the whole thing with probably 800 grit sandpaper, wet sandpaper. Yeah, that should be dry enough to wet sand this stuff now. It is wet sandable, you just have to make sure it's actually all the way dry. So we'll knock it down dry with like some 400 and then we'll finish it off with some wet sanding and we'll hit one more coat of primer, um, probably do white primer, and then we'll lay down our first coat of color. It is also worth noting that it's like 42 degrees outside. This is not what I call ideal painting weather, but I'm not what I call an ideal painter. So, let's get to it. This is the perfect example of how to use the spot putty properly because you can see exactly where the nick in the fin is. So now you can't feel that, but you can see where it was. There's one of my uh, fillet holes that didn't quite get filled. That's good now. Here's the leading edge is uh, really cleaned up. Like I don't know why I'm showing you that, like you can feel it. One last little piece here. There's a couple spots up on the body tube I'm going to hit with 320, then like I said, wet sand everything with 6 or 800, I don't know yet, and then go hit it with primer. While we're waiting for this to dry, let's talk about paint choices. Now, you guys have seen my other punishers, I kind of have the traditional thing where right above the fins there's a white vinyl band the same width as the uh, electronics bay vent band. Uh, I'm probably going to do that on this as well and then the nose tip is also painted white. However, I had a lot of considerations for this thing. I really wanted to do, uh, if you guys have been on the channel you want to look back, my roommate Brennan's shredded level 1 rocket used to be a PML Callisto that we disassembled and made into a kit again and then he built that, fiberglass it, yada yada yada, did a bunch of cool stuff to it. That was painted teal and it had yellow and pink graphics on it, it kind of reminded me of like a 90s ski suit. So I kind of thought of doing a teal color with sort of a forced metallic flake using Rust-Oleum glitter paint. Um, I gave it a couple shots with, uh, I tried this purple too, it doesn't look bad. But it doesn't look good either. I wanted to do like fin shaped inserts out of vinyl with pink and yellow and call it tubular or something like that. But uh, the funny part about these rockets is there's no set, uh, there's no playbook for it. It's not a scale kit. So when it comes to painting stuff, I don't, I'm very indecisive. And uh, there's, like I said, there's no textbook on what to paint a Punisher. The Punisher has no traditional paint scheme. It's uh, all up to you. So 
I was thinking what can make this thing stand out, what's going to be exciting for me, something that I haven't really done before, and uh, I landed on this. And the reason I was saying that this is uh, the most expensive paint job, uh, I forgot to uh, write. I have to go get black. Um, this is Rust-Oleum Color Shift Pearl. It goes from blue to purple in the sunlight. And uh, this is $23 a can. So, definitely not what you would call affordable. But, um, at any rate, going to be very, very cool. So, uh, yeah. We'll hit this with some primer. I guess I gotta go to the store. I forgot you have to spray this over black. Otherwise, the color is not going to quite come out right. So, uh, I'm going to plug the camera in, let it charge a little bit, and go situate black paint. All right, I used the test box for a little test shot. And uh, just to try and understand what I'm working with here, I guess I didn't quite grasp the concept of how it works, but it is just like regular pearl paint. So, I probably didn't need the two cans that I bought. So, $48. But, uh, I'm going to spray it on top of gloss black and then we'll clear over that. So I am going to hit the whole rocket with white primer right now and then I'm going to plug the camera in and I'm going to go to the store and get gloss black paint. All right, not a beautiful primer job, but it is just a primer job. That's fine. The nice thing about spraying gloss black is that it covers every single everything very easily. Uh, we're running out of daylight and it's getting slightly breezy. So I'm just going to go ahead and start spraying it. I'm going to go put my respirator on. Um, I'm going to let you guys watch. It's nothing special. It's just spray painting, and I'm sure somebody's going to have something bad to say about my technique or yada yada or whatever the fact that I'm about to get overspray all over this concrete, but that's okay. It's pretty easy to clean up. I paint the same way I weld. I'm not a welder. I'm a grinder. I'm not a painter. I'm a finisher. You guys know I'm perfectly willing to admit when I've made a mistake, so it's time to do that. I don't know if you can even see it on camera. It's not very big, but there is a small run there. Uh, when you're painting something this big, especially when I wear glasses but can't when I have my mask on, these things happen. Um, so what I'm probably going to do is hit it with one more coat of gloss black, and then I'll come back once it's dry and knock it down with some like 2000 grit sandpaper, just wet sand it, make a buttery smooth finish before we spray our nice color shift paint. However, I have been also painting the nose cone off camera, assuming the gloss black on that goes okay, we can go ahead and spray the color shift stuff on it today and I can show you what that's gonna look like. All right, so coat number two is on. This run is still, I mean, noticeable. It, you really probably, wouldn't even notice it unless I pointed it out to you. What I could do is make this the rail button side and put my vinyl on the other side and keep that as a distraction. I'm trying to decide if that's something I want to do because no matter how much I paint black and how much I wet sand and prepare, I always, always end up with eggshells. And I mean, I can wet sand it to 2000 grit and clear right over the top of it and it'll look super smooth and mirror finish and nice. But the reality is all my rockets eventually get damaged. And when I sprayed this sample of that, uh, that color shift stuff, it color, colors, it covers the black very prominently. The nose cone has some bad texture just as is. I sanded it, but it still looks really wavy and weird. What I think I'm going to do is hit the nose cone with a couple coats of that color shift stuff. And if I think that I can just go from there and clear over top of it and no one's ever going to notice the eggshelly base coat, then we'll, we'll go ahead and spray this today too. Um, so yeah, I'm going to just keep messing with the nose cone, try and dial things in off camera and bring you guys results once I have them. All right, guys, an update. Um, the nose cone is sitting over there. It looks terrible. Um, 
This stuff is not easy to work with, but it does cover the black very, very well. So we're just gonna go for broke and hope that once all this stuff is on, we can clear over it and sand it and everything's gonna look pretty acceptable. Um, I don't know. It being winter, I'm just like, I'm running out of time to paint this thing. And uh, like I said, it's eventually going to get broken anyway. Maybe not broken, but the paint's not gonna stay beautiful, so it doesn't need to start perfect. Let it dry, and we'll come back and do another coat, I guess. The nose cone's gonna have to get completely sanded down and redone. All right, guys, I was in mild panic mode there, but we're okay. I uh, just needed a little zen, not worrying about the video time. Take my time to spray this out. It's so, so much easier if it's in the sun. So I just did the second full coat of this. Uh, we're already done with one can and about a quarter of the other. So I'm probably gonna have to buy another one just to redo the nose cone because the nose cone is gonna get completely sanded down. We're gonna try this again, but this I think is salvageable. And it's going to be okay. So this is actually a perfect way to illustrate. See, we're purple, we're purple, and then we're blue. Oh, it's so good. I'm really, really gratified that that's working out the way it should, but you have to recoat within an hour, otherwise we might run into cracking issues. So we're gonna do, there's all these weird little spots. I think they're just spots for me spraying it too heavy because the, the pearl or whatever, I guess uh, the flakes are splotchy, um, whatever. Like I said, this is my first time using this stuff and I'm definitely no painting expert, but it seems pretty okay. So, uh, yeah, this is the side with the run in it. Uh, that's going to be my rail button side. We're not going to talk about that. Um, but yeah, this is looking really good. So what I'm going to do is let this dry for about 30 minutes. Because it says dries to touch in 20 minutes, a handle in an hour. We're going to let this dry for about 30 minutes. And I'm going to move it out front to where uh, there's more sunlight before the sun goes down. And we're going to do one more coat of this stuff. And hopefully that's it. That's the end all be all the airframe is done. All right, so here's the technique. I spray the side facing the sun, turn the cinder block to another side. This over so it's more towards the center. That way, every time I spray each side, it's in the sun still. It's not perfect. It's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna be fine. I'm gonna wear a procedural mask, like a medical one. I know it's not uh, ideal better than nothing uh, but these ones that my mom brought home have uh, anti-fogging strips for glasses Figured I'd give you guys a quick walk around while the sun's fully shining. I'm pretty satisfied with my first time uh, shooting color shift pearls, even if it is out of a can. I would like to start painting rockets with a gun and a compressor, but... Uh, for now, we're here. I don't know if that splotchiness comes through on camera. Yeah, you can see it. All right. I think those are just spots I got a little too close and bunched up a bunch of the pearl in one spot. Whatever, it is what it is. Um, 
you would like to come tell me I did a bad job, you're more than welcome to. Uh, yeah, there's a couple spots right down there on the base, too, that I'm going to have to try and figure out if there's a way I can touch up, because when I turned it uh, before I was turning the whole cinder block, I kind of pulled the paint off of it. Let me see if I can find that spot. It's kind of a bad spot. Um, but I might just, I don't know, do something goofy with that. Maybe just paint the whole bottom end of that black or something like that. I don't know. We'll see. But, uh, yeah. Not too bad. Also, side note, um, you can wet sand rust oleum paint pretty quickly. I'm not touching this, but I did just do a little soft wet sanding with some 400 grit on the nose cone to see if wet sanding this pearl will ruin it, and it doesn't. So, oh, my dad's home. Now I can show him. But, uh, yeah, so I can wet sand it, which is good. Well, that actually looks kind of cool with all the fluorescent lights. You get a little bit of each and every one of the colors. <sighs> Did not quite go as planned, but could have gone a lot worse. Um, like I said, the nose cone, it's sitting right there. I don't even want you guys to see it. It's a pitiful shame. It's a good thing I tested the pearls on the nose cone because I definitely got some runs. Um, like I said, I tested it to see if I could wet sand it without messing the pearls up, and it looks like I can. So what I'll probably do, I'm going to let this dry for... Mm, I don't know. Maybe I'll come back tomorrow and do it, depending on if it's supposed to be sunny or not. And I'll just bring over some 1500 grit sandpaper and we'll very carefully and very light pressure wet sand this whole thing. I don't want any issues with removing the pearl because the pearl is suspended in like a clear mid coat. I don't think we'll have any issues on the nose cone. I've sanded it pretty hard. So I think using a really light sandpaper is going to be just fine. Uh, it does spray and look just like regular rust oil and metallic paint, which I have wet sanded over and over plenty of times. So, yeah, we'll get it knocked down. We'll smooth it out a little bit. Um, the coverage to me was a little concerning, but now seeing it in like multiple angles of light, for some reason when I was looking at the blue, it looked like there was black spots that I missed. I was like, there's no way I missed those spots after, what, four coats of this stuff? Three coats? I don't know. Um, unfortunately, it's looking like I'm going to have to suck it up and buy another $23 <laughs> can of this stuff. So, rocketblogs.com. Check it out. Uh, go get yourself a Rocketry t-shirt. APCP ACDC t-shirt parody is one of my favorites. I need to get the hoodie of that. Um, yeah, there it is. We're painting rockets, guys. Um, this isn't so much a how-to video as it is more a video of watching me learn how to spray a mid-coat color shift pearl and almost ruin it. But the good news is, like I suspected, it does completely cover the black. It's not like translucent once you've got a few coats on there, so you can't tell any of that eggshell nonsense is there. You can still see the run a little bit. I'm hoping we can bring that down without affecting the pearl um, and then we'll do a couple coats of clear I might go get a 2k clear yeah it, it's fruit it's a dumb effort to try and save a rocket from getting damaged it really is so I probably will just end up doing rust-oleum stuff um, could do 2k clear just to be safer but uh, probably not because I'm already sixty dollars into this uh, that's that's a on sale J800 into this paint job. No bueno. <laughs> Thank you guys very much for watching Rocky Vlogs. I hope you enjoyed watching me struggle. It came out a little bit better than I thought it was going to about halfway through. Again, rocketvlogs.com. We got merch. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you aren't subscribed, make sure you press the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. You'll be alerted next time I upload a video. It's completely free. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time.